Bacteria have been helpful to genetic engineers, not only in providing them with restriction enzymes, but also with what are called plasmids. In addition to their single chromosome, many bacteria also contain tiny rings of DNA called plasmids. Plasmids are usually about 1,000 to 100,000 nucleotides long and act as independent, self-replicating molecular operators within bacteria. Plasmids are one of the ways that DNA recombination goes on within nature. While a bacteria's chromosome contains all the necessary genes to code for the bacteria's existence, plasmids provide an effective way by which traits not contained in the chromosome can be passed from bacteria to bacteria. For example, some plasmids contain genes that code for enzymes that digest certain antibiotics, such as penicillin or ampicillin. This is obviously an advantage to the bacteria. When a bacteria containing these plasmids dies, it breaks open and liberates these plasmids to the outside environment. And they are often taken up by other bacteria that then acquire the traits coded for by the plasmids. Genetic engineers can place liberated plasmids in a solution with restriction enzymes and cut them apart. The engineers then place the gene segment they wish to insert into the solution with the plasmids and then add repair enzymes that join the pieces of DNA together at their sticky ends. These new plasmids with their newly inserted genes are then placed with bacteria into a different solution that enables the plasmids to readily penetrate through the cell wall and membrane of bacteria. The bacteria that are exposed to the plasmids are taken out and grown in a culture for a short time. If the plasmids into which the experimental gene, such as the gene for the production of insulin or growth hormone is inserted, also have genes that provide resistance to ampicillin and amoxicillin, a unique technique can be used. Genetic engineers know that not all the bacteria exposed to the plasmids will absorb them. By exposing the cultured bacteria to antibiotics such as ampicillin and amoxicillin, they kill off the bacteria that didn't absorb the new plasmids, while those bacteria that did absorb the new plasmids containing the genes for antibiotic resistance and for, say, insulin or growth hormone, continue to grow and thrive in the culture. Scientists continue to grow these bacteria until the insulin or growth hormone produced by them is sufficient to be extracted and purified for use by human patients. But how are genes inserted into the chromosomes and DNA of more complex organisms such as plants or animals? There are two major methods of placing DNA into the nuclei of eukaryotic cells, vectorless and vector methods. Vectorless methods of insertion of DNA don't require the use of a third intermediate organism to deliver the DNA from one species to another. Vectors, in the biological sense of the word, are organisms that carry the DNA of one species and insert it into another.